Hey crafters, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to do some rainbow ink blending with stencils. Hope you enjoy. So I started with a piece of paper that is bigger than my stencil. And I'm just marking roughly where my stencil will sit so that I can add some ink underneath the stencil area. So starting with some Distress Oxides, I'm going to create a rainbow pattern going in rainbow order, but starting in orange. Now to make this a bit more exciting, I'm applying the ink in a bit of a diagonal pattern so that it's not horizontal across the paper. So I'm going to add the squeeze lemonade there and then I'll go back to the spice marmalade and blend these two together. So I start with some really warm tones on this rainbow and then I move into more of the cooler tones. So I'm going to use the cracked pistachio and blend that across as well. And I'm trying to keep that diagonal. And then I'll blend in the squeeze lemonade into that color. Now, once I'm happy with that blend, I'm going to add my blue and I've chose speckled egg because I really like how it blends in with the cracked pistachio as you'll see here, and it works really well with this color combination. And then I'm going to go back with the cracked pistachio again and then blend these two together. And I prefer to use these brushes when I'm using my Distress Oxides. And as you'll see later, I use foam blending tools with my Distress Inks. But whichever method works best for you. So next I'm going to add some Dusty Concord and then I'll go back to the speckled egg and blend those two together. Now before going back to the orange in my rainbow, I'm going to add some red, but I chose some abandoned coral for this, which is kind of an orangey red. And you'll see it goes really well with that Dusty Concord and also with the Spiced Marmalade, which will be at the bottom right of the rainbow. And I just love this rainbow so far. You could always use fewer colors if you prefer, but I quite like the combination of all these colors together. So I'm going to set this aside to dry for a few minutes, and then I can add my stencil on top. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn stencil, the plaid stencil, and I'm lining up the top of the stencil with the top of the paper, and then using some post-it note tape to keep it in place. Now I'm going to apply some Distress inks over top of these Distress Oxides and I chose colors that are slightly darker in tone than the Distress Oxides. Now you'll notice that I purposely went over the left hand side of the stencil and this is one of my tips for reapplying the stencil and going over the edges will help you line up the stencil when you rotate it. So I'm going to add some mustard seed there and I'll blend it into the carved pumpkin. And I'm just using the colors underneath to tell me where to put each of the distress inks. So I'm using this rustic wilderness right over the cracked pistachio. And again, I went over the left hand side of the stencil and that will help me line up the stencil again when I rotate it in a moment. So after using some Rustic Wilderness there, I'm going to add some Chip Sapphire over the areas where there is that Speckled Egg Distress Oxide. And I'll blend those in together. These colors work so well together, but you can always use the colors that you have and experiment with them. Just remember to go in rainbow order and that way you won't end up with anything that looks a bit muddy and doesn't blend well together. So I'm going to add some Wilted Violet and blend that over the Dusty Concord ink, Distress Oxide ink. And then I just have the two more colors at the bottom there. I'm going to add some Crackling Campfire right over that abandoned coral. And then I'll finish off with that Carved Pumpkin Distress ink. And I just love this rainbow ink blending. I hope you'll give it a go. So once I'm finished with this layer, I'm going to remove the stencil. And 
just as a reminder, make sure you clean the stencil in between the layers, especially when you use all these different colors of ink. I'm going to rotate the stencil and then line it up on the top again and secure it with the same post-it note tape. And then I'm going to repeat the process using the same Distress Ink colors, working from Carved Pumpkin all the way down and finishing with that Carved Pumpkin Distress Ink at the bottom right. And you can see the background starting to come together. All those rainbow colors just work so well together. So once I've finished adding all the Distress Ink onto this panel, I'm going to let it dry completely before moving on to the next step. So I'm just going to apply the second of the plaid stencils. Again, I'm using the top of the paper as well as the sides to help line it up. And then I'll use that post-it note to keep it secure. And I'm going to use some of the stencil paste. This is the fairy dust stencil paste from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to apply it through the stencil. And it's easiest to apply it in the direction of the lines. So you see I'm just following the lines there and that stops it from getting underneath the stencil and going in the wrong place. Now, if you prefer, you could always continue with the rainbow pattern, but I thought it needed a bit of sparkle on this card and the stencil paste works perfectly with the rainbow colors. So I'll just remove the stencil there and then I'll wash it with hot water and I'll set this aside to dry. It takes about 15 minutes or so to be completely dry. So once it's dry to the touch, I'm going to rotate the stencil and repeat the same process. I think the other stencil paste from Lawn Fawn would work well on this color combination as well. Perhaps the silver would be a good match, but I quite like how this fairy dust looks, especially once it's all dry. And just a tip, if you're having trouble removing the stencil paste from your stencils, make sure you use hot water to clean them. And if your tap is anything like mine and takes a while to warm up, just wait until the water's hot before putting it in the sink. So I'm just going to remove this stencil and clean it off and then let this dry completely. So I cut the panel down to five and a half inches squared and I've gone ahead and die cut the scripty birthday die with some Lawn Fawn vellum. And you may know that vellum is quite difficult to glue down to any surface without seeing the glue behind it. So what I did is I ran it through my Xeron sticker maker, all three of the scripty birthdays, and then I could just use that to adhere it to my cart. And I found that using the vellum worked really well. You just need to use a pokey tool to remove any excess glue. But the color of the vellum really looks nice against the fairy dust and the rainbow background. So I'm just going to adhere the scripty birthday and then add the dot over the eye. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'll just push down and it will secure it into place. So I'm going to repeat that two more times so that I have three scripty birthdays cut out of vellum and I'll just adhere them onto the front at the bottom and the top of the cart. And I tried cutting the birthday with white cardstock and black, but it really was too much against the uh, rainbow colors. So the vellum is the perfect match. So once that's secure, I'm going to adhere the whole thing onto a card base. This is a five and three quarter inch squared card base. And that gives a little bit of a white border around the whole panel. And I just used white glue or PVA glue to adhere this into place and I left the inside blank as the outside of the card is quite decorative. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video inspiring. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. Have a crafty day!